Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths, Weird and Wonderful, where there are now sharks in the water, so don't go swimming. And uh, this Weird and Wonderful is the Shark Attack by Martin, or M-A-R-T-I-N, as it is spelt out on Steam. And this is just a quick, uh, short and sweet uh, Weird and Wonderful. It's um, basically just uh, miniature submarines made of rubber that are sharks. And so the weird is uh, very straightforward. They are sharks. And But there's a lot uh, that's wonderful about these guys, starting with the fact they are sharks. So uh, the way they steer is that their, uh, their tail is actually an azipod. So as you can see, uh, they look as if they're uh, beating their tails back and forth. And that's just a super cool feature. And they've got little uh, decoration eyes, and they've got little teeth, which I believe are all... Um, wow, there's a lot of decorations here. I believe... What? How do they do this? There's, where, are the, where are your decorations, mate? Hang on, hang on. Aha! Aha-ha-ha! That's where the teeth are attached. Perfect. So anyway, um, these are just little midget submarines. Miniature submarines? I forget. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot to love about them. They look really cool. Very simple, very cool. Like it a lot. So yeah, we've got, decor we've got uh, uh, decoration uh, fins over there. Was wondering about that. Uh, very well balanced. Uh, a little bit of metal and lead on the bottom, a little bit of alloy and metal on top, balance them out. Covered in rubber. Um, very cheap, by the way. Each one of these things individually... Bang on, that's the main guy. Each one of these things individually is only about 5,000 materials, and they come in a pack of five. So uh, when you spawn them in, it's about 25, 26,000 materials, and there's five of them. So super cheap, easy to spawn in packs of the things, and... Uh, yeah, they are almost invisible to radar. Not radar, sonar. But well, definitely invisible to radar because they're below the surface of the water. So we go here and uh, you see that the sonar detection range for these things is about 40 meters at the front and sides. Uh, a little bit more on, on the top and bottom, but uh, that's not an issue uh, usually, which means that um, uh, if you spawn in something like, oh, I don't know, a plunderer, which has torpedoes, uh, it actually can't hit them at all. Oh my word, okay. So, uh, these things are gonna just uh, swim around. Also, torpedo swarm, so... Yeah, the, the plunderer basically can't see them at all. I think it just shot itself, and uh, these torpedoes aren't actually aiming at any of them because they can't see them at all. And maybe they'll start to lock on... Okay, there's one. Great, that didn't happen uh, on camera, but uh, I mean, when I tested it before. But yeah, most of them just whiffed completely. Torpedoes have to get uh, right over the top of them, or right underneath them in order to see them. Otherwise, they just gonna whiff completely. And also, um, since you can have swarms of them, and these little frag torpedoes uh, get fired a lot, uh, they do tend to chew through things eventually. So, tiny bit of EMP, tiny bit of frag. Not very powerful at all, uh, but does rely on the just the whole uh, death of a thousand cuts. Also, I love how the torpedoes get fired out of the mouth. That's really cool. So yeah, that's basically... Oh. So, oh wait, let's go back here. Let's go back here. Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Saw you. There's that guy. Where's it? Come on, that was perfect. We just saw... A bunch of the plunderer's torpedoes just whiff completely. Darn it. Missed it. Missed it completely. So yeah, poor plunderer doesn't know which way is up. So yeah, that's basically it to them. They're very, they're very small and simple little things actually. So they're, mo they're mostly made of rubber. Got a little AI in here. While it's transmitter, which probably doesn't help their stealth that much. Tiny little engine just to power everything. And you've got the spin block here, which has just got that angle control right there. 
lots of Guido's, little ammo boxes, and I believe, yes, it is a breadboard. And I can actually recognize this now. This is just a PID breadboard, probably to save on block count. And yeah, what, what is this? Yeah, I don't think this is the way I've set up um, PID breadboards before, but breadboards are weird in that you can do different things and they all work, so... Super steady in the water, I do have to say. It's got little control props just here. Yep, so multi-purpose little props. Goodness, that must have taken a little bit of fiddling about to uh, get the hang off. Oh my goodness. So yeah, they're probably a very good uh, starter uh, submarine, actually, just when you're starting out a campaign. So because... Um, yeah, they just spit out so many torpedoes, they are going to scratch the paint off most things. And, um, yeah, super cheap. Really cool. And apparently a swarm of six of these guys can take on a black current. So, uh, that being the godly um, Steel Strider submarine. So, uh, I was testing that before, and I agree. Uh, given sufficient time, they probably can take it off, but I think it takes a wee while. So, let's go over here. Submarine's black current. And then we will need to spawn in uh, six uh, separate sort of ones of these. So we're just going to go here, shock attack. And there. And over here, just spawn these guys over here. So over here, we're going to go over here a little bit. And because these guys are made of, mostly made of rubber, it's quite nice actually. It's a. Uh, it's quite nice because they can uh, collide with each other and not do serious damage. They are quite slow, and um, yeah, there's definitely improvements that could be made to them, but but honestly, like, as far as uh, super stealthy little submarines go, I like them. I like them a lot. So let's go here, 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 here. Also, I appreciate the fact that they're very small, and like, uh, once you've seen one, you've seen them all. It's just uh, the only difference I think for uh, the main one is that uh, it's got little extra docking ports for them. So, so now we've got our swarm of midget submarines. We've got thirty of them, and now they just have to survive uh, the swarm of torpedoes that come out here. So, as we've just established, these things are not immune to torpedoes. So I think I think these large ones. Um, actually cannot lock onto them at all because they're so nice that it shows too small. Uh, yep, they are going to completely whiff uh, that first line. And they're going to go over here and completely whiff again. That is the weakness of larger missiles. They can't, actually cannot lock onto smaller stuff at all. Okay, and here is... The medium torpedoes, and they are going to have a bit of trouble locking onto anything because they're made out of rubber. Just going to slow the game down a little bit because uh, when you've got 30 of these sharks in the water, they um, they lag things quite a bit. Wow, they got destroyed for some reason. And the black current's going out of control. So you see, right here, there's so many torpedoes being flung around, like coming in, in from all angles, that um, the black current can't pop all of them with its torpedo interceptors. And uh, there are just too many to get distracted. And I think what's likely to happen is just that little jolt of EMP is just enough uh, to um, get rid of the, what do you call it? of the passive sonar that's uh, on the black current, so... So yeah, this is probably going to take a really long time. But, uh, probably worth it. Like, black current versus swarm of sharks. Who would have thought? Yeah, that EMP is basically just... That is actually an effective way to use EMP somewhat, it's just um, uh, big massive jolts of it are more effective, but you can also just have like like an absolute swarm of uh, very light EMP and it kind of has the same effect, at least on the surface of uh, a lot of things. So I'm just watching this, um, this main mast over here, and as soon as that gets destroyed it's going to be a lot easier for that. 
Looks like one of the sharks got slightly damaged. Don't know which one. Can't go find it. Let's go find a shark. Where is a shark? Here's a shark. Let's look at the sharks. So yeah, that's basically it for this weird and wonderful. Um, as usual, the uh, link to the Steam Workshop uh, for this shark, for this craft, I mean, it is a shark. Um, it will be in the description, so go have a play with it. Man, just watching these things move is fantastic. I kind of want to make a bigger, meaner version of this. Whoop, I look, looks like uh, one of the sharks uh, got evaporated over here. Uh, yep, yes it did. Um, when these things do get hit, um, they do get hit. Getting rid of that wireless transmitter is probably is probably a good idea. Probably don't actually need that. Also, if you replace the propeller with an ion engine, it'll probably be even more stealthy. And also, you'll need to stop it from flying. And black current is getting is not getting damaged very quickly. Definitely getting the paint scratched a lot. <sighs> right, let's finish on a shark. Let's, uh, let's finish on a shark. Let's look at this guy. Damn it. Yay. Okay, well that's about it for this weird and wonderful. And weird and wonderful it is. So, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters. And then thank you to Martin, or M-A-R-T-I-N, uh, for making the shark attack. It's quite great fun. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Weird and wonderful. Look at the shark shaking his booty in the camera. Shocking. Shameless. Farewell.